Welcome back to Control. Before we continue with the upper warehouse, I want to go over something real quick and also go to an area that I totally missed until I was editing one of the episodes and realized that I missed it. Okay, first, um, I replaced the plus like 50% rate of fire for the shatter with a plus 50% damage. Because I realized that that should equal the same thing. Right, if we do just as much damage, 50% more damage, that should equal roughly the same amount of total damage as shooting 50% faster, except we don't use as much ammo. Right? So that just makes sense to me. Um, I think we might actually have a board countermeasure to turn in or something. Aha! Uh -huh. Shatter recoil efficiency. I should probably take some more, huh? His distorted... Sure. Two things for the executive sector. Anyway, uh, the big thing that I missed is that, uh, remember I went up here before and then it looked like it didn't lead anywhere? Well, it does lead somewhere. It leads to there. I just totally missed that. That's probably going to lead to that place back there that we couldn't get into. Another one of those ID cards. Security chief. Hmm, so that didn't lead there. Not directly, anyway. Meteor Hill Summary. The paradimensional occurrence consists of three sequential sinkholes induced by subterranean implosions revealing foreign material of magmatic qualities. A local chapter of the Youth Science League was participating in an archaeological dig on the hill when the event occurred. Many boys were injured in the resulting collapse. Some touched the magma directly. Bureau agents arrived at the scene seven days after the incident. Samples of the lava-like material were taken. The area was quickly sealed off from the public at our recommendation. Our aim was to ensure all remnants of the material were rendered inoffensive, but the magma descended too deeply into the earth to retrieve. Foul-smelling odors were detected in the area, which were hypothesized being the dissipated elements vapor trail left at the scene. All acquired material was delivered to Washington for examination in the Bureau's on-site laboratories. We still can't get in here, huh? Wait, can we not get in there? Or... Is it just something that I missed when we did get in there? It looks like it's a lower floor. I suppose I should try to see if I can maybe blow through the wall or something. Yeah, I just couldn't find a way in there. I tried blowing up every wall I possibly could. Tried stuff with the elevator. I think I just can't get in there yet. Another etching. Like the one I used to get in here. This one's probably going to take me somewhere too. Where am I on the... Well, oh, there I am. Up at the warehouse. So where does it go down there? That's terrifying. Because it feels like I'm meant to go down there.
Aha. Yes. Ow. Seems like they wanted to stop me. Is this the lock slash key the board told me about? How's former again? Is it the former or a former? I love the confidence. Well deserved confidence. Now just the base camp. I really do want to see if there's something down there, but I'm probably just going to hit a death plane. You know? But... Meh? At any moment, there's going to be a jump scare, a very, very loud noise of me dying. Wait, no, this... This is actually leading to something. Oh, what's down here? Or is this somewhere where we just came from? Is this a shortcut? Yeah, we have been here. Huh. I totally forgot where all these different ways go. Not that there's much to spend it on, but uh, more shield barrage damage? Sure. I, I guess after this melee damage, I really don't care about Cs. Now, here's something that I haven't read yet. The field research on those new enemies. His sharpened agents display the peri-utilitarian ability to rapidly move short distances. This ability is unique in the fact that it's not associated with any known object of power. However, we should not discount the possibility that this ability is an object variation. For example, Abrupt Physical Relocation APR, could potentially be a variant of the jukebox's effect. Other explanations of the Hiss Sharpen's ability currently include momentary time manipulation, a brief increase in physical speed, and inhibiting the witness's sense of sight. If we do accept that the Hiss Sharpen's ability is not connected to a known object of power, then the Hiss are either manifesting unique paranatural abilities, or there are objects in the house that we aren't aware of. 
Either way, the Hiss are continuing to develop new strains of corruption, and that is cause for concern. Also, at some point we got this, and I don't think we read this. It's in a new category, Astral Research, Astral Copy. With the astral plane now physically accessible, a torrent of new information has been collected on the entities known as Astral Copies. Oh, those are the, the gray and I suppose the gold ones, too. The copies' bodies are composed of a dense, stone-like material that is both resilient under controlled circumstances and brittle when struck with significant force. Whether the astral copies possesses individual consciousness or are directed by a higher intelligence, such as the Borg, remains unknown. However, their shared aggression seems to indicate a unified goal. Director Faden's encounters with these entities when binding objects of power in the astral plane indicate they serve as live targets for potential para-utilitarians to practice on. Some have been equipped with bureau weaponry, though it seems unlikely they were armed by our personnel. It is important to note that they appear immune to his corruption. Oh, hey! The crossroads. There's people down here doing research now. <gasps> Emily! Jesse, hey! Emily, how did she get down here? What are you doing down here, Emily? What do you mean? You called me down, remember? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, that's right. You didn't. But then, I remember you needing me to come here. I mean, you even told me how to get in. Let's just chalk it up to synchronicity so we can get to work. She takes everything in stride. The board called me down here to deal with the situation. The astral plane is colliding with our world, I know. Isn't it fascinating? I never even considered that the astral plane could be a, a physical volume expanding beyond its dimensional container. The bleed is localized to this area, but its growth rate seems steady. Given time, it will consume the entire Bureau. And possibly beyond. That's what I'm here to stop. The board told me to fix the nail over there by dismantling four locks in the astral plane. Funny, I think it's put itself back together a bit. So that could be due to the law of inverse exchange. For every associated component you remove, this nail reconstructs. Or possibly some variation of anti-sympathy. Don't worry, I'll look into it. Did you notice all the Bureau infrastructure? It looks like there was a research team stationed down here at some point. Do you think Darling knew about this? I'd put money on it. That reminds me, have you seen Marshall? She contacted me over the hotline, but then I saw her walking around. I haven't seen her. The hotline only connects to extraplanar entities. Or dead people. But Marshall's proved time and time again that she's a survivor. That's exactly what I thought. Anyway, I've been looking into the minerals growing down here. Have you noticed how they insist on maintaining a certain form? Maybe some sort of a, a state memory, or they consciously prefer a certain shape? Or... I think we're on a clock here, Emily. I need to stop the astral bleeding before it brings the oldest house down. See what you can find out from the nail in the meantime. And send out some rangers to look for Marshall. She may be in trouble. Will do, Jesse. If you see anything interesting, remember to take detailed notes. New mission. By the way, I totally ship Emily and Jesse. They'd be such a cute couple. And I feel like they get along really well. Jesse, you're back. So did you find anything noteworthy? The original Bureau expedition down here left so much interesting stuff behind. Like their ID cards. I picked up a weird one. It's pretty old. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, I found a few ID cards myself. Or, more accurately, the rangers found them for me. Are you starting a collection? I'm going for the whole set. I kid, of course. But I suppose they are sort of like baseball cards. Except for bureau staff from the 60s. Hey, the one you found is different than mine. It looks like it's a higher clearance level. A rare one, then. Want to keep it, Emily? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely do. But I think you should hang on to it for now. 
High clearance access might come in handy. Sounds like you have something in mind. Guilty. See, I've been going through Dr. Ash's notes, or the ones I can find, anyway. Like Darling, he seemed to enjoy hiding his most relevant research. From what I gather, there is another floor beneath the warehouse with a special lab that requires five high-level staff members just to access. Here, take this. It's an old skeleton key. Something else the rangers found. I give them five bucks for every useful trinket they bring me. I'm gonna assume this key is my ticket to that lower floor. And that super secret lab you mentioned. Bingo bango, as Dr. Darling used to say. Well, keep your eyes peeled for more ID cards around the warehouse. If Ash's notes are reliable, and I'm sure they are, then five is the magic number. Oh, I'm so excited to go to that lower floor. Uh, looks like we're missing one ID card. Ah, dang. Oh, I think that's the one through the door, which we might have access to now at the bottom level of the warehouse. Also, just look how excited Emily is every time they talk to us. God, Emily's really cute. I mean, we're collecting baseball cards for them. That's so gay. Then back to the warehouse. Let's see if we can get under there now. Ooh, looks like I can use it. Yes, probably the rare one gave us access to this, and then this should be the fifth one. This ID card was for an excavation engineer. Why did so many people abandon their cards down here? It is rather strange. Ash, request denied. From... L. McNary to Ash. Dr. Ash, as Chief Exec Excavation Officer, it's my job to support the research team. So I got you your machine for that ridiculous sand research project. However, it's also my responsibility to ensure the safety of my crew. Do you know how many trips it took to get an entire bulldozer down here piece by piece? And do you know how many of my guys we lost in those trips? Here's a hint. Too fucking many. Which brings me to my point. I'm writing you today because of this request form that just landed on my desk. Apparently you want a lightweight one or two man military grade helicopter for the purpose of surveying the vast expanse of columns by air. I bet you didn't even stop to wonder how much time, money, effort, and blood this toy would cost us. Well, no sir, I'm sorry, but I will not subject my men to another month of marching through the death trap upstairs. For Christ's sake, these people have families, not that they ever get to see them anymore. Request denied. Lewis McNary. Ooh, I just heard a bunch of things spawn outside. I mean, I guess I... From the layer of dust on this place, nobody swept here in years. Not even Ati. <laughs> no way he'd stand for this. There's an elevator, which I'm sure is super safe, in a space in each terminal for an ID card. But which card goes where? Uh, wherever that shooting's going on, I guess it doesn't really concern me, does it? Maybe it's below in the lab? I don't know. Going out? Take a buddy! Hmm. Safety? Or gay? Don't know. Could be either. Just terminals now. Oh. The old agents from the 60s. Wait, are all the terminals marked one? That's weird. Okay. Um. <laughs> they have group numbers, of course, different names. They have different symbol symbols for their departments. Is there symbols on the machine? 
Or maybe it's like what they're near that should give us a clue, like where the station is. Right? Like, okay, this shows maps. Caution. Like, what could that be? Maps. Caution. Senior cartographer. Could be security chief. Let's say cartographer because there's maps. Okay, that's target practice. So that's probably security, right? Oh yeah, and there's guns. Yep. Security chief. A physicist would probably have instruments or something. For physics. <laughs> uh, there's some sort of instrument there. Not much. But I mean, that is like a classic physics thing. Thing. I don't actually know what it's called. You know, the balls hitting each other thing. Let's say that's lead physicist. Hmm. Lots of files and they have a computer. Probably head researcher. And then this one. Yeah. Excavation engineer. Yep. I wonder what it worked. Uh -huh. I just have to get on a rickety elevator that goes who knows how far down. Oh my god, I'm so excited! What am I more excited for? What I'm gonna find down here or that I get to tell Emily about it? Basement lab. Whoa. So we were hearing it from down here. Music still going, there must be more. Processes designer Gibbs, that apparently is. successful launch hits heal me. Levitation ammo efficiency. I still don't care for that, really. Hmm. 
Minus 32%. It's real damn good, though. <sighs> now that everything's ruined, let's explore. that do? This looks like the nail, only mini. Mini nail. Northmore final warning from Northmore to Ash. As director of the Federal Bureau of Control and chosen representative slash liaison slash benefactor of the greater authority of the board, I demand your immediate withdrawal from the foundation. Prior memos issued broadly to foundation staff called for swift reassignment of all personnel to the upper levels of the house. All staff complied except you. This demonstrates a lack of respect for my office and the board itself. This is their house, and we are their guests. We should conduct ourselves accordingly. Normally such insubordination would be grounds for dismissal, but out of respect for your late father, consider this instead my final warning. The board and Director Ash chose me as successor to the office, but no amount of petulance will change that. Indeed, your actions seem to suggest you know better than myself, and by extension better than the board. Permit me to assure you that, is, that this is not possible. Sincerely, Director Broderick Northmore. A document? Is this in some kind of code? I can't read a word of it. I should take this back to Emily and tell her I got into Ash's secret lab. I'm still wondering what's up with this. So they go up, I guess, at least to the next floor up. Let's track it. It's over there. Wait. There's a hidden floor. There's another hidden floor. Are the pipes out here at all? Nope. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Never mind. That's not a hidden floor. That's just a basement place. Apparently you can't take the elevator directly to it. Let's go check it for the pipes. Don't care. I don't see any pipes here either. Where do they go? I must have done something. Well, let's go speak with Emily. Maybe that'll shed some light on it. Ash's secret lab. Excellent. Please tell me everything. Spare no details. Uh, well, there was another cave. The walls were covered in paintings of eyeballs. The research seemed dedicated to studying a kind of... smaller version of the nail. It looked like the same material as the one up here, but just a different shape. 
Are you sure you didn't see any functioning prototypes? Or at least some schematics? I mean, Dr. Ash was a very accomplished engineer. None. Sorry. I did find this handwritten note. Wow. I had terrible handwriting. Never meet your heroes, right? So it looks like a transcribed conversation between Ash and someone named F. Ooh. Oh, this is juicy. This will take me days to parse out. Maybe weeks. Have you ever thought about taking a vacation, Emily? Are you kidding? This is my vacation, Jesse. <laughs> the Rangers have tapped into an old radio network they found around the Foundation. So if you need backup, just call them at one of the stations. How did the Hiss get into the Foundation? Same way we did, I imagine. But you need to remember that the Hiss are the embodiment of persistence. Their nature seems to be one of force, to find every possible vulnerability and exploit it. Their only goal is consumption. I'm sure there's plenty of goodies for them down here. The nail, for instance. If the Hiss could corrupt the nail, I'm sure they would have by now. It must not interest them in its broken state. They could be distracted by the numerous unknown paranormal materials I'm sure are lying around. These are the roots of the oldest house. The Hiss will find plenty of ways to make trouble. They're pretty good at that. So you've never heard of the Foundation, huh? I've never even seen the name referenced. It clearly, it's highly classified, but for what reason? See, the problem with these kinds of closed-off, hidden areas is that they were likely sealed for good reason. But now, no one is left to tell us what that reason was. Any guesses why the Bureau would hide something like this? I only know what I've observed. This place is spatially rigid, which means it doesn't shift like the rest of the oldest house. And before you ask why that is, I have to admit that I'm clueless. There's some signal interfering with my equipment, making it hard to get a clear reading. It's being emitted from the floor. Maybe I should have brought a jackhammer. The astral plane is already taking chunks out of this place, Emily. Let's not add to it. So let me get this straight. The astral plane is bleeding into the Foundation. Correct. And that's happening because the nail is damaged. I'd say it's a bit more than damaged, but yes, that is my understanding. So, what's the connection between the nail and the astral plane? It's a good question. See, I always pictured objects of power as strings between our plane and the astral. If the nail has a similar relationship, then maybe it's more accurate to think of it like plumbing. Now that the nail is busted, sewage is gushing everywhere. Not the prettiest metaphor. I should get back out there. Agreed. The astral bleed won't stop itself. Search some more for where that pipe might go. No luck. So, let's continue on to the crossroads. We are... Well, we don't have an active quest for some reason. Reach the base camp. So to get to the warehouse, we went up there. My throat feels all scratchy. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go down into the abyss. Launch health recovery. Probably not better than my level 6 one, but <laughs> let's check. Oh, it's all the way... Yeah, it's all the way here. Yeah, it's less than half as good. Ooh, look at that distant light. I think that might be where we need to go, or one of the places we need to go. Looks like there's another place over here. Uh, must be that up there. Yeah, it's all above us. Yeah. <sighs> 
Oh, these things again. Do you think a shield would protect me? No. the what were they called something copies yeah astral copies it's the astral copies Got all my health back from those launch hits. Beautiful. <laughs> Base camp is that way, so this is an extra way. Hurting them? I assume so. I'm hitting them. Kit, the astral plane rock was constructing a staircase. Where the heck does this go?
I mean, I can't complain. There's clearly things I can access that people with the other ability couldn't. This area looks newer. Is it from the upper floors? 